If you're flying soon and haven't been through airport security in a while, you might be a little anxious as a diabetic to go through airport security and all that that entails. But never fear because in this video, I will share the top 12 mistakes that I see people make when they go through TSA. Hello and welcome back to the channel. My name is Wendy and I am the Unconventional Diabetic and we are starting a series on traveling with diabetes. So if you wanna see more videos like that, make sure you leave a comment below. And while you're down there, make sure you subscribe to the channel. I remember airline travel back before TSA even existed, and maybe that's dating myself, but there was a time before <laughs> the TSA existed. There was a time before you had to take off your shoes and your jacket and measure out liquids and so on and so forth. But alas, those times are no more. And in 2024, you need to know the most you can about navigating airport security. And by following these tips, you'll be able to smoothly go through TSA and airport security, regardless of where you're flying. Now remember, small disclaimer, these tips and mistakes are what I see traveling domestically within the United States. Always double check TSA guidelines, your airport guidelines, and your airline guidelines to make sure that you know the most current information when you travel. Did you know airport security prep actually starts at home? That's right. The way you pack and how you pack and what you pack make a difference in how smoothly you will make it through airport security. So let's look at those top 12 mistakes. Mistake number one, not making a list and checking it twice. I know you're not Santa Claus, but let's be real. We're human and we forget things. So the easiest way to not do that is to create a packing list in advance download one from someone's YouTube channel or whatever, but get that list and make sure that you have eyes on everything in that list to be sure that it is packed. Don't rely on memory because you may misremember something. So make sure that you have eyes on those supplies. Mistake number two, not knowing the current guidelines. As I mentioned before, you can check guidelines with TSA, with your airport and your airline to make sure you are compliant every which way from Sunday. Most of the airlines have an app that you can check or just go to their website. You can go to your airport's website and you can go to the TSA website at tsa.gov. In addition, you can tweet or text message or Facebook message the TSA. Yeah, you can do all of that. And you can get the answers to your questions by simply communicating with the TSA. Mistake number three is actually not separating your medication from other toiletries. Depending on how many medications you have and the size of those medications, you may actually, and you probably should, separate them from any other toiletries or over-the-counter medications that you carry with you. What I would strongly consider you doing, and this is what I'm going to do, uh, next time I travel is carry a separate bag, a separate carry on bag just for medical supplies. Now, what that does is al it allows you to say to TSA, I have a disability or I have a medical condition and these are my medical supplies. That way it's easier to get them screened and they have an idea of what they're looking at. Also, the TSA has a notification card that you can download from their website where you can just fill out the conditions that you have and it gives you contact information like a 1-800 number and an email in case you need more support. But remember, when you're at the airport, you can always ask to speak to a TSA officer, especially a supervisor. Mistake number four, not separating non-medical liquids. This is more for people who do not use TSA PreCheck than it is for PreCheck. Because in TSA PreCheck, you don't have to remove liquids as per the 311 rule, but you do in the standard uh, TSA security line. So here's how this goes. The 311 rule is this. If you have liquids, gels, paste, creams, or aerosols that are 3.4 ounces 
or smaller, they are allowed in your carry-on bag. However, you are supposed to put them in a one quart clear bag. That could be a Ziploc bag or it could be a fancy TSA approved bag. And the last one is that you are allowed one per passenger. If you are traveling through TSA pre-check, you do not have to remove these from your checked from your carry-on bag, excuse me. But if you are traveling through the regular TSA line, be ready to easily remove that bag out of your carry-on bag so that you can put it in a bin and it can be screened. Again, if you're going through pre-check, this is not an issue, but this is not the scope of the video. So if you wanna know more about TSA pre-check, leave a comment below and I will make another video about the advantages of pre-check, especially when you're traveling with diabetes. Fun fact, did you know that peanut butter, because it's spreadable, falls under the 311 rule? That's why I'm opting to travel with these packs from Justin's and they are, this is the classic almond butter. It's got protein and obviously fat because it's a nut butter, but it is only one and a half ounces. And I picked up six of these. So I will be traveling with those on my next trip out to Las Vegas. So those are an option for you as well. I am not sponsored by Justin, but hey, if you're from Justin's and you're watching and you'd like to hit me up, let me know. Leave a comment. Mistake number five, not checking in online. Look, between your smartphone, your iPad, your computer, and so many other things that you have, there's really no reason for you not to be able to check in online, unless there are specific special circumstances, such as traveling with a pet. In which case, you will want to get to the airport probably 30 to minutes to an hour earlier than normal so that you can get your check-in sorted out. This is also true if you're checking bags. Make sure that you have enough time to wade through the line, especially if you're flying economy or coach, so that you can get your bags checked and get through security without much stress. And that leads us to our next mistake. Number six, getting to the airport late. Oh boy. Now, I have had times when I have cut it close getting, it, getting to the airport, but there is no, there's almost no such thing as getting to the airport too early, okay? But there is a such thing as getting to the airport too late and you do not wanna be in that position. I live 45 minutes away from my airport and I know how much of a slug it can be to make the 45 minute, an hour, two hours for some people uh, trip to the airport. But the thing is, is that the earlier you get there, easier travel becomes. For example, if you're going on a long-term trip and you're parking in the economy parking lot, well then you're gonna need to ride the shuttle bus from the economy parking lot to the terminal and who knows how often those buses run, maybe every five minutes, maybe every 15 minutes, maybe it depends on the time of day. The point is, is that you need to be aware of these extra steps and reverse engineer the time you leave so that you're leaving on time. And this is especially true if you're traveling with multiple people and or pets or small children. A good guideline is to get to the airport two hours ahead of time if it is a domestic flight or three hours ahead of time for an international flight. You can also check the status of your flights through your airline's app, which you did download, right? your airport's website, sometimes they have an app too. And you can also visit the TSA's app, yes, they have an app too, called My TSA that allows you to see the estimated wait time for regular TSA and TSA PreCheck and whether or not TSA PreCheck is actually open. As a bonus, if you use the My TSA app, you can also see an estimated wait time for in the future. So if you're not traveling today, or you wanna know how things are gonna be in like two or three days, they're using past data in order to show you what it's likely going to be based on past traveler usage. So that should be helpful in planning your trip as well. And the last thing about getting to the airport, if you're using a rideshare service such as Lyft or Uber, 
make sure that you book that travel in advance so that you get to the airport in enough time. I always do that when I have to take an Uber from my hotel to the airport so that I can fly back home. That way I know, depending on how long it takes to get to the airport, I will get there in enough time, go through security, and be well adjusted and rested at my gate. And remember, it's okay to get there early, but you don't wanna get there late. By the way, if you are getting value out of this video, make sure you hit that thumbs up button. And for a complete list of travel essentials, especially for traveling with diabetes, check out the link to Amazon in the description below. Now, back to the tips. You've made it to the airport. Yay! Now it's time to actually get in the security line. Yeah, but there's still some things you've got to do before you actually get to the scanners and the x-ray machines and all that. So mistake number seven is getting in the wrong line. Yeah, that's possible. I see it every time I fly. There are people who try to get into the TSA pre-check line when they do not have pre-check. And by the way, that pre-check should be on your boarding pass, which you should have checked before you left to go to the airport. Um, ideally, you checked it 24 hours ahead of time when you checked in and then contacted the airline if there was a problem. But let's say that didn't happen and you end up in the regular TSA line. Okay, no big deal because you have the My TSA app and you looked ahead to see the estimated wait time. So you are easy sailing. Now, some airports have an additional line for those with disabilities. For example, if you cannot wait in line for whatever reason, maybe it's a mobility reason, maybe it's PTSD, but not every airport has that. So when you get, when you approach the security lines, ask the employee who's checking boarding passes, if there is a separate line for disabilities. If there's not, unfortunately, you'll have to go through the regular line unless you have TSA pre-check. Again, if you wanna see that pre-check video, let me know. Mistake number eight is taking water through TSA, which you actually can't do <laughs> um, unless it's a medical necessity. So here's the thing. A lot of people have very nice water bottles, myself included, and it is very easy to forget that you have water in those bottles. So make sure that those bottles are empty. In some airports, there is a space for you to pour out liquids before you get to the security line, but don't rely on that. Make sure your containers are empty unless that liquid, such as a juice box, is medically necessary, in which case you will need to inform the TSA officer that you have something that's medically necessary and that's why you're carrying this liquid through TSA, um, whether it's regular screening or pre-check, both apply. Mistake number nine is pretty simple. A lot of people just don't pay attention when they're in line. They don't see the signs, they don't hear the officer's instructions, they don't know what's going on. And so consequently, by the time they get to the front of the line, everything is now jammed up because they are not prepared. So pay attention to what's going on in front of you have some situational awareness. If people are taking off their shoes, if they're taking off their jackets, if they're taking off their belts, then you probably should too. You can double check with the TSA officer, but it's a good chance that you'll have to take your shoes off as well. So make sure that you're wearing some comfortable, easy to slip on and off shoes. Otherwise, again, this just becomes more burdensome and in your travels than necessary. So Go for comfort and go for ease rather than trying to be cute. You know who you are. Again, if you're in the pre-check line, this isn't an issue because you don't take off your shoes, your belt, or your light jackets in TSA pre-check. And mistake number 10 kind of goes with mistake number nine, which is not listening to the TSA officer's instructions. Look, I get it. They're not always the nicest people, but they are also dealing with some people who are very anxious all day and all night long. So let's give our TSA officers a break and listen to the instructions that they have said over and over and over again. And by listening to those instructions and asking when things are not clear, you will have a smoother experience. Mistake number 11 
is not having your materials ready when you approach the TSA officer. Now, every airport is different. So you will need to know, and this is where paying attention comes in, whether or not you need to have just your ID ready or whether you need your ID and your boarding pass. Depending on how TSA is running in your particular airport will determine what you do. Here's what I do because my personal item is almost always a backpack. I empty my pockets before I get into the line. So no car keys, no credit cards, nothing like that is in my pocket except for my driver's license and my boarding pass, which is on my phone. So my license and my phone are the only two things that I have outside of my backpack. Everything else is inside a pocket somewhere, easily accessible, but inside of the backpack. That way I have fewer things to fumble with. I'm not worried about pulling things out and things just go more smooth. Smoothly? Yeah. <laughs> so <laughs> that's my pro tip for you is to make sure you empty your pockets, which you also have to do anyway, but the less that's in your pockets, the less you have to put in the bin and the less you have to collect on the other side. So make it easier on yourself and just consolidate, consolidate, consolidate. That is the name of the game. And mistake number 12 is forgetting about your wearable medical devices. And no, I'm not talking about your Apple Watch, which is not technically a medical device at this point, but I'm talking about continuous glucose monitors. I'm talking about insulin pumps. I'm talking about pacemakers and other devices that just simply cannot be removed or not easily removed. Check with the device manufacturer to see if it's been tested by going through x-ray machines and body scanners. Otherwise, you should and can ask for a pat down in lieu of going through a machine if you are worried about the machines damaging any of your medical equipment. You can always ask for a pat down. You do not have to go through the machine. Also, if you are wearing a prosthetic device of some sort, such as a knee brace, be sure to inform the TSA officer because you will likely 99.9% .9 of the time need to go through some additional screening. They may not ask you to remove said device, but they may pat it to see its location. I always make sure to bring these two things with me when I travel. To find out why, click or tap the screen for the next video. By the way, did I forget any tips? If I did, leave a comment below the video and let me know what I missed and how we can all travel better.